to come into the house of the Lord to magnify and exalt his name because God is still worthy of the praise. This is the day that the Lord has made. Oh, and I will, I will rejoice and be glad in it. Beloved, listen, this is important because we know that the liquid sunshine has kept some folk at home, amen. So why don't you just help me a little bit and pull out your device. Come on, pull out your device and why don't you text somebody at least or go on Facebook and post, amen, that worship has begun and it won't be the same, amen, without them. So come on, beloved. Come on, let us magnify the Lord and praise his holy name, amen. All blessings flow. Oh, praise him. Praise him all oh, praise him. Praise him all heavenly. Oh, oh, praise Father, praise Son. Praise Father, Son. And Holy Beloved, our men's ministry, our sons of Allen, will be leading us in our worship experience. Our call to worship, Brother Thomas Patterson, our invocation, Brother Anthony Smith, and our scripture lesson, Brother Johnny Johnson. Amen. Call to worship. For well, some of us, it was tempting to sleep in this morning. But God has called us to this place to hear God's word, to open our hearts in prayer and praise and to seek direction for our lives. God is always faithful to us, comforting, guiding, lifting us when we feel downhearted. Jesus says, rise. When we wonder, if we can't continue on our journey. Jesus says, I am with you. 
You have nothing to fear. When we hunger and thirst in our souls for relief. Jesus says, come follow me. Lord of hope and possibilities, be with us today. All together. Open our hearts and spirits to feed upon your healing word. Let us worship God together, for God is worthy to be praised. Amen. Beloved, please repeat. Please remain standing for our opening hymn. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And then a little my heart and love and wrote my name above. And just a little talk with Jesus make me whole. Without further lining. Come on, beloved. I once was lost in sin. But Jesus took me in And then a little light from heaven Filled my soul Heart in love And wrote my name above And just a little talk with Jesus Made me whole Oh, come on Now let us have a little talk with Jesus And we'll tell, tell him all about our troubles Hear our faintest cry, answer by and by, and when you feel a little prayer, we'll turn it, and you know a little fire is burning, you will find a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Oh, I may have doubts and fears, I may have doubts and fears, my eyes may fill with tears. Jesus is a friend who watches day and night. I go to him in prayer. He knows my every care. And just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Oh, now let us have a little talk with Jesus. And let us tell him all about our troubles. Hear our faintest cry, answer by and by. Feel a little prayer, we'll turn it. Know a little fire is burning. Just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. Oh, now let us have a little talk. Have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our troubles. Hear our faintest cry, answer by and by. Feel the little prayer will turn in. Know a little fire is burning. Have a little time. Amen. Pressing on the outward way, new heights I gain every day.
Dear Lord, it's once and again your humble service comes to your altar as humble as we know how. Thank you for blessing us to see another day, Lord. And while we slumbered and slept last night, we want to thank you for blessing us where we didn't have to worry about bombs falling on our heads during our sleep, Lord. So bless those people in the Gaza Strip, Lord, who from day to day don't know what's going to happen next, Lord. Reach out, touch our leaders, their minds and their hearts, that they'll make the right decisions to put lives over manly things, Lord. And Lord, bless our sick and shut in. Give them strength that you can be a healer, Lord. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, we're all going through something in our lives, Lord. Well, just, well. You know, some suffer in silence. Some uh, give, a, give a report, but you know all about it, Lord. Thank so you, we, Lord. right now, this morning, Lord, just, just step in and touch, heal, whatever we're going through, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In this tough economic time, there's somebody looking for a job, Lord. Yeah. They don't, it looks, looks, looks dim, looks bleak. But you are, you are always a right on time, God. When it looks like it's the worst is going to happen, Lord, you step right in, and then we can always look back and see, I wonder how did I get over? I don't have to wonder. I know it was you, God, that brought me through. My God. Damn, the it was So you were, you were always a right and made everything okay, Lord. And Lord, there's one that's new, too. As we go into our graduation season, touch our young people, Lord. Touch their minds and their hearts. That as the word goes out, it won't come back void, Lord. That they will listen and take wise advice. Paul told Timothy to train up a child as he should go when he gets old, he won't depart from it, Lord. So let's do our part, train our children. And when they get out on their own, Lord, they can look back and, look, and remember the things that parents and grandparents told them to keep them on the guided, on the right way, Lord. And Lord, as we go into our service this morning, touch our pastor, Lord. Touch the message you prepared for her to give to us, Lord, when it goes out. All over the world with technology that it won't come back void, Lord, that it touch somebody's heart and let them, like the woman in our church bless this morning, she'll be grateful that, that they're saved and they'll come to Jesus praising him and thanking him for saving their souls, Lord. Because this life is fleeting. It's not what we can do all the healing we can for this body, but what about the spiritual body? Where is it going to spend eternity, Lord? You have to make a choice, heaven or hell. And we ask you this morning, Lord, to give us rest in paradise with you, Lord for eternity. In this prayer, we ask your son, Jesus' name, amen. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven, save a lamb, a higher plane than I
While he was eating with them, he gave them his gave him this command: Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, 
which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptizing with the Holy Spirit. Then they gathered around him and asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, it is not for you to know, this, know the time or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid him from their sight. Glory to the Father. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was. And the people of God said, amen. amen. And they said, amen again. Beloved, are there any visitors under the sound of my voice? If there are, we do invite you to please stand at this time. Well, amen. Come on, hallelujah. Know that you are welcome in this place. Come on, St. Paul, let us make her feel welcome. Amen. We welcome you. Amen. Indeed, you are welcome and do come again. Amen. So grateful, amen, that we are blessed with young people here at St. Paul. And God is doing an amazing work in that ministry. And at this time, we will have our youth church dismissal. Amen. And if there are any young people in the pews, amen, we're asking you to come on, slide on out. Amen. To God be the glory. Even on a rainy day, they have pressed their way. Amen into the house of the Lord. And indeed, we are grateful. Amen. Praise God. No need to go the long way. Nah, uh uh come on. I'm calling you out. Yes, Pastor. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, I was a mama before I was a pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, bless us, choir.
Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. If there anybody that loves the Lord like I do, the brother said that you are the what? Name, come on, of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And the people of God said, Amen. Come on, let's show some love to our music ministry. And while you're clapping, show some love to our ushers as well as our media team. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. God has a way of moving, beloved, and we give him the glory. And the people of God said, amen. Brother Johnny has already lifted up the context of our sermon this morning, coming from Acts chapter 1. And in your hearing, I'm going to lift up the first four verses. Beloved, we're still in Easter time. We're not quite at the ascension. It's coming. But Pentecost is on the way. Amen. Acts chapter 1, lifting up verses 1 through 4. In my former book, Theophilus, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait. Somebody say wait. But wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. And for a little while, I want us to reflect on this thought as a deadline. Until, until, until has a deadline. Shall we bow, shall we pray, O most holy and righteous God? Lord, I simply just want to say thank you. It's in, you have a way of just ushering in your spirit, God, and speaking. So come on, Holy Ghost. Come once again uh, with your quickening power and speak to my very soul. Lord, uh, I'm asking you to strengthen my voice right now in the name of Jesus. Because it's not by might uh, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. And the people of God in agreement said, Amen. Beloved, until has a deadline. In your Holy Ghost imagination, see yourself nestled in your favorite chair. You got your popcorn and your jujubes in hand and your favorite diet soda is on the table. And suddenly the mini series uh, that, that, that you are watching, uh, it begins uh, to fade out. The, the villain is getting away, leaving our minds to wonder and think of what could possibly happen next. There we are. Motionless for a moment, waiting to see if this is just a ploy to make sure that we are in place for the conclusion that has taken several bowls of popcorn to get to. 
then it happens. The dreaded words to be continued. A black screen to be continued. Seriously? To be continued, really? It, it was just getting good. Mm -hmm. uh, to, to be continued. Why am I tripping? Because deep down I know that this is not how the story ends. But, but I believe that I don't want to wait. I, I want to know what happens what now. Not tomorrow, not the next episode, but what now? I'm ready, uh, I'm poised and positioned to see the next episode right now. I've been waiting all this time just for this very moment and all you can continue. In other words, keep waiting. Yet everything in me is screaming, but tell me now. That's when we turn off the television and, or we walk out of our home theater because we immediately shift our focus from the devastation of having to wait a little while to what is now. What's going to happen? What's next? The next move. The next decision, the, the, the next plan. Are you not with me? So help me, Holy Ghost, uh, make it live. How do we embrace uh, to be continued when I'm waiting for the test results? When, when the doctor appointment is, is several months out, but my symptoms uh, have not changed. In fact, it feels like they are getting worse. I'm still waiting for the loan to be approved, but the bills I do now, not tomorrow, but what? Right now. When is the job going to post? When is my breakthrough actually going to come? And what do I do in between time? What about my questions, my, my, my anxiety, uh, the, the, the maddening frustration uh, that I'm feeling, the lack of completion, uh, the irresistible lure of needing to know what happens next now? What do I do in between time? Beloved, it's in the between time that that frustrates me. I, I'm talking about me. Uh, it's in the between time that frightens me and makes me uneasy because I don't know how to navigate in between time. Because there are too many unknowns. There are too many uncertainties uh, that are nestled uh, within in between time. You're not hearing me. What shall I do? What steps should I take? What move should I make? Lord, what shall I do in between time? Well, beloved, Luke is the author of today's text and this drama begins to unfold in chapter one luke writes in my former book and he's talking about the gospel of luke he says in my former book theophilus i wrote about all that jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven after giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles he had chosen. After his suffering, he presented himself to them and gave many convincing proofs that he was what? Alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. But this is our sermonic focus in verse 4. On one occasion, 
while he was eating with them. He, he gave them this command, do not leave Jerusalem, but wait. <laughs> do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with what water, but in a few days. But you got to wait, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Jesus is reminding his disciples of the message that he gave them when he first appeared to them after the resurrection. And that he said to them, don't you leave Jerusalem. As difficult uh, as it is for you to stay in that place, uh, the directive is for you to stay where? In Jerusalem. Jesus says, do not leave Jerusalem because the promise has been dispatched and you're going to find it where? In Jerusalem. Oh, beloved, can't you hear this conversation, uh, I can in my, in my holy ghost imagination, uh, Jesus, uh, you just told us to wait. Uh, and that was almost 40 days ago. Uh, now you're telling us uh, to keep waiting uh, and to stay in this same place, uh, Jerusalem. Don't you know this is where you were crucified? Jesus, you died in where? Jerusalem. Don't you know uh, these are the very people who took you from us in where? Jerusalem. Don't you know that they don't even like us either in where? Jerusalem. And you want, we've already been here. And nothing has happened. We, we followed your commands and, and nothing has happened. We have been obedient. We have prayed and we have fasted. Uh, we've done what was expected of us. And now you're saying to wait here in Jerusalem until. <laughs> Beloved, and wait we must we got to what? Wait on the Lord and what? Be of good courage. Well, we got to wait on the Lord even in the midst of difficulties. We got to wait on the Lord even in the midst of trials and tribulations. We got to wait on the Lord and confidently expect the Lord to move. Oh, but we got to wait on the Lord. And we got to expect the promise uh, to be fulfilled. We got to wait on the Lord and trust him at his word. Beloved, we got to wait because sometimes the test is in the waiting. Sometimes the test is in the, is in the waiting. And not just to wait on the Lord. Uh, uh, he said he still wants us to what be of what? Good courage. Uh, my world is falling apart. But you said to wait. Jesus continues the promise in verse 8. But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes up. Uh, upon you and you will be my witnesses telling people about me everywhere even in where Jerusalem throughout Judea and Samaria to the ends of the earth after saying this he was taken up into a cloud while they were watching and they could no longer see him Beloved, don't miss this. Jesus has been crucified. He died, was buried, and he rose again. And now we find ourselves between the time 
when Jesus has left his mission completely up to his apostles, but it's before they would fully be empowered by the Spirit to accomplish that mission. <laughs> I got to wait. Lord, 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 you, you, you've told me what to do, but you had not empowered me to do it yet. Oh, Lord. Believe it or not, many times in life we find ourselves in the same place as the disciples. We are waiting right there in betwixt, lingering in the until. Missiles falling daily in the east. Killing innocent folk. And it is impacting the West in ways yet to unfold. Violence of every kind is on rise and the police chief resigns. Man sets himself on fire outside where the Trump trial courthouse is and he eventually dies. What's my point? Chaos is all around us. To be continued. Now what? What's next? Right there in the betwixt and, and, and lingering until the until uh, and admittedly life uh, as we know it uh, is no longer the same. Uh, beloved, uh, for some of us, uh, everything we've done up until this point has been to create uh, and solidify our livelihoods. In other words, we used to have a comfortable, come on, uh, way of life uh, only to be interrupted by life. Uh, what am I trying to say that every now and then life has a way of lifing? But y'all know I'm a good news preacher. And I still come with some good news this morning. Because until has a deadline. <laughs> You'll get that later. Until, beloved, uh, it has what? A John Mitchell says it. He says it won't uh, always come on be like this. Uh, that God will perfect that uh, concerning me, uh, and sooner or later it will turn in my favor. Sooner or later it's gonna turn in my favor because it's turning around. Ooh. You get that later. It's turning around. Boy, it ain't going to be like this. What uh, always, uh, beloved, until has a deadline and it culminates uh, with the promises of God. I know I got to press my claim up in here. Come on, Holy Ghost, help me testify with some biblical evidence. Jacob. Jacob wrestled with the angel until daybreak and he did not let go until the Lord blessed his soul. The priest who carried the Ark of the Covenant of the Lord, they, they, they stepped, come on, in the middle of the Jordan River and they stood on dry ground until the whole nation had crossed over on dry all the days of my struggle, I will wait until my change comes. They crucified him and Jesus hung on Calvary's cross from the sixth hour until the ninth hour for the cleansing of your sins and my sins. They laid him in a barbed tomb until the third day when Christ rose with omnipotent power. Beloved, until has a deadline. The prophet Isaiah says in chapter 32, verse 15, until the Spirit is poured upon us, from on high 
until the spirit, uh, until the windows of heaven open up and pour out his spirit upon you. The wilderness becomes a fruitful field. And the fruitful field is deemed a forest. God promises a new day for God's people. He promises a day of healing and a day of victory and a day of joy but you got to get right with God and you got to do it now because until has a deadline beloved take a barren wilderness <laughs> and, and he can turn it into a fruitful field. But Brother Brock, don't you settle for the fruitful field. Uh, don't, don't you just settle for a glimpse of the glory of God, Brother Quincy. Uh, because you got to continue to trust the Lord and he'll turn that field into a forest. But you got to wait. Until has a deadline and it culminates. In other words, it concludes with the promises of God. So I know you're saying, well, Pastor, what am I doing in the meantime? In between time. Beloved, why are you waiting for your change to come? Stop twiddling your thumbs. Stop just staring in the sky. Because Brenda, now is the appointed time. And why don't you go on and do what you've been putting off? And why don't you go on and do what the enemy has been telling you what cannot be done? Because until has a deadline and the enemy don't have the final say over my life. So while you are waiting, you waiting in your own Jerusalem. I don't know what your Jerusalem look like, but I know what mine look like. Keep on trusting God for that healing. You got to keep on trusting God for your breakthrough. You got to keep on believing that your second chance is right around the corner. You got to keep praying. You got to keep fasting. You got to keep praising because sometimes the test is in the waiting. Why don't you launch that business? to your dream until your change comes. Stop standing there. Stop looking in the clouds. We got to do God's will. We got to humble ourselves. We got to pray. We got to seek his faith. We got to stay in the faith. We got to stand on the promise that the spirit of Pentecost when the church caught on fire that we too can be revived again we too can catch on fire because sometimes the test is in the waiting until has a deadline because it won't always I don't care what it look like right now it won't always be like this God will perfect God gonna make it come to pass he gonna mold me he gonna shake me. He gonna retool me. He gonna perfect that concerning me. And sooner and sooner and sooner or later it's gonna turn in my favor. The last thing I leave you with is that to be with us on (laughs) 
If you ain't remember nothing I said, you just remember that. That Jesus, he promised to be with us on. Sometimes the test is in the waiting. But even then, until has a deadline. People of God in agreement said amen. And I'm not sensitive because I know some of us been waiting for a long time. Wondering when your change is going to come. Yes, I don't mind waiting. But beloved, be steadfast. Be unmovable. Why, why are you waiting still always abound? <laughs> In the work of the Lord. Come on, beloved. I don't mind waiting. I don't, because I, I got to trust the omnipotent power of God. I, I got to trust the omnisciently of God. Because God can see what I can't see. Perhaps there's one under the sound of my voice. I know it's a struggle. But beloved, you need the Lord in your life. Because he promised that he would never leave you nor forsake you. But you don't believe it. Because you don't have the Holy Spirit abiding on the inside of you. To remind you of the promises of God when the going gets tough. But you just need to receive the gift of salvation. And when you receive that gift of salvation, you receive the Holy Spirit. Never leave you. The Holy Spirit would talk to you, counsel you, comfort you, give you a divine recall. As long as you don't give yourself over to a reprobate mind. Hey, little somebody. Ask you to stand all over the church. The door of the church is open. Perhaps there's one under the sound of my voice. Maybe you're watching us virtually. And I'm asking you, amen, to give your life to Christ. Because Romans 10, 9 says, if you declare with your mouth, Jesus is Lord, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then, beloved, you will be saved. It's just that simple. It's a confession and it's a belief. It's by grace that you are saved, not by your works. You cannot get good enough and stop trying. Just give your life to Christ. So pick up the phone, call us, 334-286-8577. We will pray the prayer of salvation with you. If you're looking for a church home, beloved, we offer you St. Paul. Amen. Just grateful for how God is moving and have his hand upon us. Amen. Will there be one? The door of the church is open. Beloved, will there be one? Way home, the Lord. Yes. And be a good girl. Oh, come on, wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. Yes. And be a good girl. Hey, come on. Wait on the Lord. Beloved, what time is it? Time. Beloved, what time is it? Time. Let's bless the Lord in the ministry of giving. Because if the truth be told, despite what others may be saying, God is still meeting your need. God is still making a way. God is still raining down manna. 
Beloved, let us read our giving verse together. God supplies seed to the planter. He supplies bread for food. God will also supply and increase the amount of your seed. He will increase the results of your good works. You will be made rich in every way. Then you can always give freely. We will take your many gifts to the people who need them. And they will give thanks to God. Beloved, we ask you to prepare your offering at this time. And if you want to give online, we do support Cash App. PayPal and Givelify, and we encourage you, amen, if you want to give online and your bank supports Zelle, to please give via Zelle. Or you can simply mail it in, 706 East Patton Avenue, Montgomery, Alabama, 36111. Or beloved, we have a locked mailbox, and you can drop it in there. Come on, prepare your giving at this time, amen. All things come of thee, O Lord. All things come of thee, O Lord. And of thine own. And of thine own. Amen. Beloved, thank you so much for your sacrificial giving. We ask you to continue to trust the Lord in your life in the area of giving. And my prayer is that God will multiply your seed back unto you however he chooses. Perhaps some 10, 100,000, but however he multiplies it back to you, we will join in with you and give you the glory. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you so much for your offering. At this time, beloved, we will have the announcements. Good morning, St. Paul. Thanks for joining us in person and virtually. Before we leave, here are a few quick announcements. Calling all seniors, that is golden agers, ages 60 plus. Need a break from your routine and want to meet new people? St. Paul's Senior Center is seeking more in-person participants to join in the excitement on Mondays through Fridays, 9 a.m. to 12 noon. There is arts, crafts, age-appropriate exercise, and field trips. Van pickup is available. For more information, please contact 
Eldra Marcus at 334-421-9066 or the church at 334-286-8577. Help spread the word. Thanks to all who supported the Alabama State University Gospel Choir Spring Concert. It was indeed a hallelujah and blessed time. Special kudos to the media team and feel free to check out the service on St. Paul's Facebook page and the YouTube channel. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The Ethel M. Howard Women's Missionary Society is very thankful, grateful, and appreciate all who attended, prayed for, and donated to our annual day last Sunday. We were able to donate $264 to the church from your generous giving. Calling all students on Wednesday, April the 24th, we will be celebrating the end of the school year and the last day of tutoring. Dinner celebration begins at 6 p.m. Family Vacation Bible School will be held Wednesday, June 19th through June 21st. The community outing will be held Saturday, June 22nd. Stay tuned for more information. Mark your calendars for our upcoming meetings and save the date. All meetings are via Zoom and the agendas will be emailed out. The trustee board will meet April 23rd at 6.30 p.m. And the official board meeting will be held April 30th at 6.30 p.m. Calling all St. Paul graduates. Yes, St. Paul's graduating seniors from high school, college, and graduate level programs. Please contact Sister Pat Patterson, co-chair of Christian Education, with your graduation information by May 26th. Send your information to pjpat at bellsouth.net. Before you leave today, be sure to stop by the health ministry table and have your blood pressure checked. Weekly reminders, men, please join the men's prayer call each Wednesday morning at 6 a.m. Calling all St. Paul youth, do you want to grow in your faith, learn more about God and have fun? Then come to the Youth Sunday School in the Lamar P. Higgins Fellowship Hall at 9.15 a.m. A light breakfast is served. Hybrid Sunday School is held each Sunday at 9 a.m. You may participate in person or via teleconference. Please keep our sick and shut in and our church family in prayer and be sure to join the 12 noon prayer call. If you need van pickup on Sunday morning, contact Brother William Rolak at 334-531 0658 on Saturday evening. Be sure to leave your name, your address, and a return call number. Please contact Brother Dwight Martin 7 to 10 days prior to the event. This concludes today's announcements. For more information on any events or happenings, be sure to follow us on Facebook, like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and check out the church's webpage. Until next time, have a blessed week. Amen, amen. Just a couple more announcements. I ask if you would keep the family of Sister Jackie Jones in your prayer. She had a cousin to pass and we're praying for the Holy Spirit to comfort them and for safe travels. Also the family of uh, Charles Knox, even though he lives in California, he's from Montgomery or Wolverine. He transitioned this weekend as well. On this Wednesday, we will have our last day of tutoring because exams actually start in May and school is coming to a quick close in May. However, if there are students that need help with exam preparation, please don't wait till the last minute. Reach out and let us know so that we can um, pair you with the correct person, amen, to get you, amen, through this school year successfully, amen. And finally, I'm going to ask you all to be in prayer. I guess some of y'all say, okay, when is enough going to be enough? Listen, before COVID, we had a four-week jumpstart program. 
where we actually had young people who were behind in school or who needed amen to actually, you know, uh, catch up in preparation, amen, for the new school year. I know y'all looking at me like, where's she going with you? I'm not going to ask you to do anything but pray. That's all I'm asking you to do. Because the Lord has placed it in my spirit that when COVID happened, we had to let that go. And we had certified teachers, amen, that we brought in Monday through Thursday to work with these kids to get them ready. Well, we got a whole group of kids that are not in school because when COVID happened, they just decided not to even go back. And they behind. And it's just in my spirit. Don't ask me, I'm not gonna ask you for the money, but I'm gonna find somebody who's gonna give me the money to pay these teachers. I did it before, so I trust God he'll do it again. And I also gonna be asking God for some money because I need to rent a van to go pick them up because our van is tied up with the senior ministry. I'm just telling you what to pray for. And I just believe we can do this in the middle of June to the middle of July because the kids go back to school early in August. And we can do this four-week program. Sometimes you got to put the stuff out. You know, write the vision, make it plain. Put in the atmosphere. I I'm telling you, I need you to pray. I don't have a dime right now, but I bet you I'm going to find it. I'm telling you, just pray with me because my heart is so heavy when I hear about these kids who don't have the opportunity. Amen. Amen. And that's all we're trying to do. We got the plan. I don't need them here all day if they just come here from what? 9 to 12. We, did, we have the model. It worked before. It'll work again. Just believe with me. That's all I'm asking. Okay, Agnes, they're ready to go home. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Oh. Oh, praise him. Oh, praise him. Oh, praise Father, Son. Beloved, until has a deadline. Until has a deadline. It won't always be like this until has a deadline. Now may the Lord bless and keep you. May the Lord allow his face, his countenance, his favor to shine upon each and every one of you and be gracious to you. And may God give you his peace, his peace that surpasses all understanding while he's guarding your heart and your mind in Christ Jesus. Beloved, this is our prayer for today, tomorrow, and forevermore. And the people of God sung... Amen. Have a very blessed week. We have trustee board meeting Tuesday night. We still got Bible study on Wednesday. I hear they preparing a scrumptious dinner for y'all Wednesday. So come and have family dinner at six o'clock. God bless you.